Okay, we're just discussing Madison Sumi, but also keep an eye out on another uh, company. You know, Apollo Hospital came out with a set of numbers. Everyone was wondering, you know, the numbers, the stock had opened up in the green, it had come off the top. Ekta's on the con call. She's just filling us in with some more details. The stock, by the way, has moved to the low point of the day. The pledge shares they're mentioning on the con call has gone up by nearly around 5%. And the pledge shares are rising due to some unwinding of KKR instrument, which was closed out in January. So, you know, the stock has moved lower from the top. It's corrected uh, quite a bit and now it's moving uh, to the low point of the day as well uh, you know we should get that up for you as well the pledge shares have gone up by nearly around five percent approximately Rima okay that's uh, about Apollo Hospital keep your eye on the ticker team uh, on your flash screen you will keep getting more and more updates let's move on IEX is the company which is on our radar it came out with numbers over the weekend a steady quarter SN Goel the MD and CEO of IEX joins in uh, to discuss uh, the quarter gone by. Uh, Mr. Goel, thanks so much um, for joining in. Um, if you could just start off by telling, we've seen a double-digit growth in your volumes. Um, but despite that, your revenues are actually flat. We understand that there was a decline in the REC volumes or the renewable certificates, but if you could just explain what happened on the top line or on the revenue front. Why was it flat? Good morning. Uh, See, electricity volumes uh, in the first nine months and also in the quarter three both grew by almost 20 percent. And uh, electricity volume growth was uh, basically because of the demand growth in the country, which was almost at a good rate of 6.5 percent. Electricity demand is expected to grow further because uh, government uh, has now achieved 100 percent rural electrification under the Subhagya scheme, which will drive the demand further high and exchange volumes on electricity segment. As far as REC is concerned, the volumes are lower because there is no inventory of REC. Earlier, you know, REC's were uh, issued, but uh, no distribution company was buying REC's. But in the last two years, the RPO compliance have improved. So many of the distribution company have started buying REC's and inventory is over now. That is why, in fact, uh, the volumes are lower. Otherwise, the demand for purchase of REC is very high. But in electricity segment itself, let me tell you a few things. As I told you, the demand is further expected to go high. Today, we have a surplus generation in the capacity in the country. The demand is growing and a robust transmission system. And these are the key drivers for growth of electricity market in the country. In the recent past, uh, government and uh, regulator both have taken many initiatives to deepen the electricity market. Uh, right. Very recently, in the month of January, government of India has right. uh, Mr. Goyal, has issued cross-border guidelines Right. You know, Mr. Goyal, let's take that point forward. You know, you're ta talking about demand being rather strong. So break that up for us. Where is the demand coming in from? Is there some industrial demand as well that's coming in there? Or is it just through discoms and residential? Go ahead, Mr. Goyal. This demand is mainly coming from the distribution companies and from distribution companies across the country. Uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, JNK, so demand is coming from almost all distribution companies in the country. 100% of the discoms are active on the exchange platform. Okay, and are uh, distribution companies or discoms buying more short term? Um, you know, are buying more from the short term market? And if yes, if you could just give us a breakup between the short term as well as PPA in the country and what part of it is dealt by the exchange. So what would your market share be? See, we had in fact traditionally long term market in the country so that is why almost about 89% of the transactions are under the long term. It is only 11% which is through the short term market and out of that exchange share is almost about 40%. So, but the short term market is growing every year. So what is the growth in the short term market? Is that a new trend that we are seeing? Growth in the short term market is Almost about 10% every year, the short-term market is growing. Okay, all right. Uh, and whereas exchange is growing at a rate of almost about 20%. Okay, interesting. You know, PTC India, they're coming out with uh, a competitive exchange. Uh, do you see that as a threat? No, there is, as I told you, there is enough opportunity in the power market in the country. And uh, competition is always good, good for the consumers. So this will maybe bring in more uh, new products in the market. Okay. Okay. 
We'll uh, leave it at that, Mr. Goel. Thanks so much uh, for joining in. India Cement's Q3 numbers, revenue in line with the CNBC TV18 poll at 1,316 crore. Even the bottom line at 3.1 crore is in line with what we were anticipating. It does imply a big fall on a year-on-year -year basis because 3 crore would compare with 15 crore in the December quarter of last year. But this is something that the street had priced in. Uh, EBITDA has come in, uh, Nigel, at 135 crore. 135 crore. Okay, so that's a bit of a small miss in comparison to the poll uh, number. Yes, we were expecting a compression because that number, the 10.2% uh, will compare with a number of more than 13%. So there is some margin compression, but it's a little bit more than what we were working with. So that's, uh, you know, uh, that's a little bit disappointing. Um, costs that have gone up, yeah, I think fuel cost is something that would have hurt them. So uh, that's something as well that we should get out, get uh, for you up on the screen. But the numbers, as you said, Rima, more or less, uh, the street is expecting a disappointing set. But this is the problem because it's come in a little more disappointing than what the street was working with. I'll just have a look at whether or not they've reduced some debt. You know, the, the finance cost number will give us a so bit of an... The finance cost yeah. has come down from 92 crore to about 73 crore. So there is a sharp drop, drop. in the finance cost, more than 20% drop. Yeah, we'll have to also keep an eye out on the forex element out there. You know, whether or not there is debt reduction I'd, uh, or is it because of some, uh, you know, forex element that there is such a sharp drop, as Rima is telling us, uh, the finance cost has come down from around 95 crores to around 72 crores. Now, if there is a debt reduction, it will be very, very positive. So, we'll have to wait by for clarity on that front. The problem with India Cements normally is that we don't even have the volume number. So, we'll try to get that uh, for you. But fair to say, operationally, well, these numbers are looking a little bit uh, disappointing from the numbers uh, that we have. Power and fuel costs, that has spiked up drastically. It's come at around 403 crores. That compares with around 306 crores, telling you that input costs have gone up, and that's really spoiled the party from them, from around 300. So that's up by nearly around 25% approximately, and that's the reason why we are seeing some pressure out there. I'll be watching this finance cost very, very closely. Is there some debt reduction? The street will read that very positively if there is. For the time being, these are the numbers that we have. Top line in line, margins a bit of a miss. We're expecting a compression, but not to the extent that it's come about 10.2%, as Artika team just told us. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time, um, Mr. Goyal, so we'll have to wrap up our conversation there. Um, with that, it's time for a short break. We'll come back with more on the markets. Um, stay tuned to CNBC TV 18.